Now I'd like to talk about causal inference, which is perhaps the most practical aspect of causality. And the main idea of causal inference is to infer interventional distributions from observational data. And the main reason we want to do that is that interventions or A-B tests are an extremely effective way of measuring the effect one variable has on another. However, these interventions are extremely expensive most of the time and may perhaps be risky and in some cases be unethical or dangerous, especially in application areas such as regulation and healthcare. Now, as an example, consider that we want to increase our marketing budget and observe the change in revenue. All we have to do is do that experiment so spend, say, $10 million on increasing the marketing budget in one quarter, observe how that changes our revenue, and then estimate that impact from our data. But of course, increasing the marketing budget is expensive. You spend $10 million US dollars, and you might not actually see anything, so that's $10 million lost. And also, you don't know if your customers maybe have an adverse reaction to perhaps more aggressive marketing. And these are things that you generally don't really know beforehand before you do the intervention, at least in the classical regime. Fortunately for us, causality and causal inference in particular allow us to predict what's going to happen in the experiment without actually doing it. So this is the main idea of causal inference. It allows us to infer the results of interventions from observational data without doing the experiment. Now, to explain how this works, I'd like to give you a high-level example. The main idea is that we simulate an intervention by modifying the causal graph. So here we have the causal graph from before. And let's assume that Y is our marketing budget that we'd like to increase. Z is our revenue that we'd like to observe. And X are perhaps all the different factors that affect each of these. Could be anything could be a large number of variables. Now assume that we increase our marketing budget to $10 million. What we'll have to do in the causal graph is actually destroy this edge from X to Y because we do an intervention to Y and that means that nothing else can influence it, which means that we'll have to cut off any incoming edges into our intervention node. And this will look like this. Now, once we have done this modification of the causal graph, we then need to observe how the distribution of Z changes in this modified causal graph. Now, obtaining this interventional distribution is not always that easy. And I'll go into detail exactly how we can compute this interventional distribution now. One of the main ways of doing so is via the average treatment effect or ATE for short, which really is just the average of doing one intervention minus the average of doing another intervention. So what is the effect of doing one action compared to doing another action or no action? And causal inference, again, allows us to estimate this effect without doing the interventions. Now here I've shown you a slightly technical note, which is the equation for the ATE. Now here the ATE is simply the expectation or average of our target variable, so our revenue in this case, given that we do a certain intervention, so increasing our marketing budget, minus the expectation of our target variable for when doing another intervention, so maybe doing nothing. Now if the ATE is zero, that means there's no causal effect at all. That means whatever we've done uh, has no impact whatsoever. And if this AT is either positive or negative, that means there is indeed a causal effect. Furthermore, we can quantify it, and we also know whether it's positive or negative. And lastly, the main crux and the main difficulty of this is really estimating the interventional distributions. Fortunately for us, Judea Pearl has already solved the problem and developed do calculus, which allows us to effectively estimate these interventional distributions. And I'll go into detail how this is done exactly, but this will be slightly more technical. So just to conclude the high level overview, causal inference allows us to estimate and infer interventional distributions without actually doing any experiments. And it does so by 
modifying the causal graph and thereby simulating this intervention. And the only reason why that's possible is because we have access to this causal graph, this unique kind of structure that allows us to interact with the causal flow of information. And then lastly, the average treatment effect allows us to estimate and quantify the causal effect our simulated intervention has. Now let's go into the detail about how to actually infer these distributions. And to do so, I'll have to talk about adjustment sets. Suppose we want to intervene on our node Y again, and we want to observe the effect it has on our target variable Z. And while we're at it, let's also compare the result to that when working with a Bayesian network. Now in Bayesian networks, we usually have to apply Bayesian inference to obtain our distributions. In particular, we are interested in obtaining the conditional distribution P of Z given Y from our original causal graph. And we can actually apply basic Bayesian statistics to obtain this distribution. So we start with P of Z given Y, and we simply rewrite it as an expectation or a, a sum over the variable X. And then we apply Bayes' rule to P of Z and X given Y to rewrite it in terms of P of Z given Y and X times P of X given Y. And this is simply applying Bayes' rule. Now, this P of X given Y is really critical here because from our Bayesian network and causal graph, we know that X is a causal driver of Y. But P of X given Y tells us that X can be affected by Y which really doesn't make sense from a causal perspective. Now that means that in Bayesian networks, information can actually flow backwards, which is really counterintuitive actually, if you think about it, and also prevents us from solving any of these interesting causal related questions that govern most of the real world. Now this looks different for causal inference and causal graphs. In causal inference, we're interested again in estimating the interventional distribution P of Z given with us doing an intervention. And we do this by, first of all, modifying the causal graph. So we delete this edge from X to Y. And then we simply apply Bayesian statistics like we did before. Now we can rewrite the interventional distribution P of Z given to Y as the sum over X of P of Z given Y and X times P of X. So note how the modification of the causal graph has gotten rid of the effect of P of X given Y, and now we're just left with the effect of P of X, which of course completely respects the causal flow of information. And now the exciting part here is that the left-hand side of this equation is an interventional distribution, and the right-hand side of this equation depends entirely on observational data and entirely on observational distributions. Now, the x here is actually quite critical. The x is what we refer to as an adjustment set. And if you had a, an extremely complex subgraph here in the top instead of x, so maybe 20 nodes going uh, completely wild with a lot of complex interactions, if you find the adjustment set, the correct adjustment set for this subgraph, then you simply need to substitute that sub, uh, adjustment set for x and you can compute the interventional distribution in exactly the same manner with exactly the same equation. Now, of course, the key here is what is the right adjustment set that we need to condition on. And luckily for us, again, Judeo Pearl has solved the problem and developed two calculus. Specifically, he's developed the backdoor criterion, which allows us to find the correct adjustment set for any causal graph. And the criterion says that an adjustment set is sufficient for our causal effect estimation problem if it blocks or so-called backdoor paths from Y to Z. And I'll explain a bit what backdoor paths are. And that no descendant of Y is in the adjustment set of S. So all the errors from the backdoor paths first have to lead into Y and not out of Y. And once we have found the correct adjustment set, we can actually compute the interventional distribution using the same equation that I've shown you just now. Now let me show you visually what I mean by an adjustment set and backdoor paths. First of all, a backdoor path is a path going from 
one node to another by some kind of non-directed convoluted way. So here, the direct way of going from Y to Z is, of course, the edge between them. And a backdoor path is really a path that goes from one node to another through some other kind of convoluted path. So here, Y, X, and Z is a backdoor path. And furthermore, since Z is the only child of Y, X is indeed a correct adjustment set. However, if the arrow here were reversed, so if there was an arrow from Y to X instead of from X to Y, then X wouldn't be a correct adjustment set anymore because it would be a child of Y, which then doesn't satisfy the second criterion or the backdoor criterion anymore. So here, X is the correct adjustment set for a particular graph. And we can then estimate the intervention distribution via this equation here. Now, again, if you've got a different causal graph and you find a different adjustment set using the backdoor criterion, you can simply substitute it here and for these yellow circles for X, basically, and still use the same equation. Now, this concludes the section about causal inference. And in addition to the high-level overview, I've also shown you what adjustment sets are, what the backdoor criterion is, and furthermore, I've given you an example of what backdoor paths are. Thank you.